The summer of 2031 was a hot one. Emily celebrated her 35th birthday yesterday, and so she is sad today. This event started the merry-go-round inside her again, one end of which rests on the question, what's wrong with me? And the other end, is there something wrong with the world? Everyone in her surroundings lives their fascinating lives, only she exists as an appendix to them. After going through all the usual issues for self-meditation, she found the culprit again. It's her mole on her collarbone, which always catches her eye since childhood. Amelie felt that this mole spoiled her appearance. She quickly packed up and once again decided to go to the nearest clinic to have this mole removed. She had gone before with this problem, but she didn't make it. She broke her heel and had to go back home. The second attempt to reach the clinic was also unsuccessful. As she was walking past a high-rise building, someone poured some yellow liquid and Amelie found herself right under the spray. She had to go back again. The third time, she was sprayed by a passing car. And the fourth time on the way, she decided to feed a stray dog and it bit Amelie. She ended up in a toxicology clinic instead of a cosmetology clinic and was getting a rabies. For the fifth time, she has to walk, whatever happens. So she did, but she came across a closed door and a sign on it. We have moved. The new address was on the other side of town. It would now take a whole day to get there. Amelie came home to spend the rest of the day with her phone in her hand and a movie on her computer. This plan was more successful. In half an hour, she was already lying on the couch. She turned on the first movie she saw and it showed the trailer and then switched to commercials. We opened and now we are changing people's destinies. Get your DNA decoded and discover your origins. Expose imposters. Or maybe you are from a royal family and by misunderstanding of the human factor got among ordinary people with ordinary fates. We'll help you figure it out, said a pleasant female voice. Emily wrote down the number, pure truth. Half an hour later, some men in sterile clothes took biological samples from her, thanked her for contacting them, and left. Emily is upset by an incoming call on her phone. She promises herself for the hundredth time not to answer unscheduled calls, but for the hundredth time she breaks that rule. Hello, little one. Abby's older sister sounded cheerfully through the phone. I asked you not to call me Malaya, she replied. Well, if you were big, you'd have your own family, your own life. If you're so infantile, then you're small. Accept the truth and don't resent your fate. You're your own creator. By the way, why don't you sit with Dan tonight? Kieran and I have big plans tonight. His friend's daughter was born and we're going to celebrate at a restaurant. We'll be late. Dan will be bored alone tonight, her sister said. No, I can't, Amelie said and paused. Is something wrong? Are you sick? My sister asked. Oh, I'm healthy. I have plans of my own tonight. Amelie lied. Hmm, what are your plans? If you don't mind me asking. You got a date. I hope you don't blow it. When you get emotional about your new date, remember that you're already 35. 36, 40 is coming up. 40, Amelie. Wake up. Wake up, said the sister. I'll definitely do that. If he runs, I'll catch up with him and lie across his path. Are you all right with advice? Amelie asked. Oh, that's okay. I already realized you were just blabbing about a date. You've gotten lazy, you've gotten lonely, you're gonna be a loner. And that's natural, because a single woman of age is a nobody in society. Okay, bye. I have to stop by the boutique for a new dress, and then to the salon for makeup, my sister said, and ended the conversation. Amy Lai knows what to do in such moments. She got up from the couch and went to the fridge. Thankfully, the food had not yet learned to lecture her and give her advice. She decided to cook frozen meat in some exotic way today to add some variety. But then she was distracted by her phone ringing again. Emily, why didn't you reply to my good morning message this morning? Are you sick? Ari, the other sister, asked. Oh, I mentally wished you a good morning too and thanked you for your attention. What did you want? Emily asked. Oh, I just talked to mom. She says dad's not feeling well again. He's been thrashing around all night, his blood pressure skyrocketing. Mom didn't sleep well, says she has a headache. I'm worried about both of them. You should go see them today, Ari said. Oh, I talked to them too. They're fine. People get sick sometimes. Sometimes they don't get enough sleep. That's normal too, Amelie replied. Hmm. To be honest, sister, I've been frightened by your callousness lately, said the sister. 
Don't you know that at their age they need more care and attention? And who will give it if not our beloved daughters? They have invested so much energy in us all their lives. And where is our gratitude? ARE's on a roll. You're the ones they put everything into. And when I needed them, they were already old. Why can't you visit them yourself if you're so worried? Emily asked a counter question for the first time. Sister Ari was first angry in response and then offended. When she finally hung up, Emily felt incredibly lighthearted. She felt her stinginess on her emotions for once, and it made her feel even more joyful. In a moment, Emily even forgave both sisters, who lately had made a habit of calling her a loser for any refusal of their requests. Hello, I ordered a DNA transcript from you. They called me and told me everything was ready. Amelie said at the reception desk of the Pure Truth Clinic, Give me your number. The polite girl asked, 1350089, the letter F. Amelie said, Yes, you have everything ready. Mistress Tyler, the girl answered her, You're not confused. I have a different surname. Emily said, taking the piece of paper with the numbers and letters, I'm sorry, it could be anything. I'm just seeing the result of the transcript. According to this result, your genes are similar to those of the Tyler dynasty. It's a 98.4 match. That's the truth. Our method doesn't allow any errors. She smiled. Emily flew out of the clinic, went to the nearest coffee shop, sat down at a table and read the transcript. The girl's words were confirmed. The waiter brought her coffee and tiramisu. Excuse me, young man. Do you know who Tyler is? Emily asked absent-mindedly. Well, who doesn't know him? He seems to have been the richest man in the country for the 15th year in a row, the waiter replied. Amy Lay now opened a search engine and typed in the last name Tyler. It seemed to her that the internet was designed to tell everyone else about the life and work of the Tyler family. There were three brothers in the family. Each of them had a passion for developing their own business from an early age. And now, a few years later, these three are on everyone's radar and all three of them have brilliant reputations, never got involved in politics, never robbed ordinary people, never been caught up in scandals, no tax evasion, never denied generosity to anyone. They didn't go it alone, they pulled others along with them. Some ideals of peace, Ramele, who only yesterday had refused to go to her parents' house, was now on her way to see them. She decided to call them beforehand so that she wouldn't have to wait for them at the closed door. Mom, hi. I need to talk to you. Is daddy home? She asked her. Still at home, but he's going somewhere. Is there something you want to tell us? You found a husband? Mom was happy. Bye, mom, bye. Tell your father not to go anywhere. Amelie said, hung up the phone and hurried to the cab that was waiting for her in the courtyard. Either mom didn't tell him or dad seemed uninterested in surprises if they didn't concern his son-in-law's fantastic future. So dad left after all to go about his business. Mom left too, as if on purpose. Emily was upset, but she wasn't going to give up. It was a good four hours later, and it was as if her parents had gone on a trip around the world on foot. When Emily had already slept on a bench outside the house, she decided to call and find out. And we were just on our way home when the Petrovs called. Their daughter Kate brought her fiancé to the house to meet her parents. I mean, how can you resist when your friends have such joy in their family? We're going over there. You better come too. Katya and her fiancé are still here. You'll see that the young man will find friends for you too, said the mother. Mom, you need to change your worldview and put someone other than a man at the center of it. Amelie blurted out, what did you say? What should I change? My mother interjected, genuinely not understanding what she was talking about. Mm, I mean, you're obsessed with. Okay, I'm sorry. That's not what I meant to say. All right. You two enjoy getting to know each other. I'll walk to the movie theater and hang out. When you get there, don't forget to call me at home and bring some goodies from the house the groom visited. Maybe we'll get some, Emily said and hung up. The advertised movie in the theater turned out to be some kind of trifle. It was over, but mom and dad weren't done being happy for the Smith's daughter. Emily decided to watch some horror movie to get her nerves in order, to calm down after everything she heard from her surroundings on a regular basis. The horror movie did help. By then, her parents had arrived home, not really curious about her daughter's name. Oh, Mom, Dad, you and I are all adults now, she began her speech, especially you. 
Mom said in a characteristically pitying tone, not the point. Technology has advanced to the point where anyone can decipher their DNA and find their blood relatives if they suddenly lose contact with them. I used such a service out of curiosity. And this is the result, Emily said, and showed her parents a paper with incomprehensible numbers and papers. Father and father cast a quick glance, but understood nothing. It says my DNA is a 98.4 match to the Tyler family DNA. And I demand to know how that happened. How did I end up in your hands? Why am I not with my family? She put the question squarely on the table. This is bullshit. Here's my belly that you crawled out of almost 40 years ago. It hasn't pulled back in since. Here's your father who was personally involved in the process. Together were your parents. And these crooks do whatever they can to make money and stir people's minds. That's your news. I thought it was something more important. My mother said and turned her nose up. Father sat pensive, and I supposed why she didn't look like any of us, and I've never had such unlucky, I mean feminized relatives on my female side. What if there really is a secret here? He turned to his wife. Oh, Sammy, don't you start. She's like you with her lack of willpower. Promises she'll make, and then she doesn't deliver every time. It's just genes, that's all it is. And these transcripts and all that stuff are bullshit. I've seen the program, and they make such a mess, said the mother. But dad wasn't about to back down. Look, she doesn't even look like us. You're a redhead, I'm a redhead, and this one's black. What do the geneticists say about that? He's staring at his wife. So what is it you want to charge me with? That I knocked up your daughter? Yeah, Sammy, being with you for almost half a century and hearing you say that, you judge everyone by yourself. I'm sure you remember your Nayeli, who you chased for almost five years despite her marriage, or Bora, whose husband nearly crushed your skull when he saw your poem about her. Shall I tell you more, or is that enough? The wife stared. All right, folks, stop. I'm not telling you this news so that you can quarrel over jealousy and doubt. I thought we could think together about how this happened and come up with a reasonable explanation, Amelie said. That's what I'm saying. Mother, give us a reasonable explanation. How did this happen? Sami said, pulling a full bottle out of the refrigerator. And you're at it again. You promised me you'd quit and then you'll complain about your blood pressure again. Amelie's mother was indignant, but it was too late. The family had been looking for a reason to settle their relations for a long time, but they had never found one. And then the daughter brought up such a topic that now they could only dream of peace. In their heated arguments and alliances, they did not even notice that the daughter had left for her home. When Amelie reached home, she saw several missed messages from the most mysterious man in her life for the past four years. He is Ree's son of influential parents, here to the family business, perpetually bored with life, and just plain whiny beyond his years. Emily had long ago grown tired of watching his short, low-quality videos and endlessly reacting to them. Then with horror, then laughing where it wasn't funny, then explaining simple things and getting the response. No, she dialed Reese's number. Hey, I can only talk to you for a little while. Why don't you read my messages? It's my day off. You could have come to my place and talked to me. I'm in no mood at all. I've been spoiled. Reese began to complain. My dear friend, I know why everyone is driving you crazy. If you wanted to solve this issue, it would have been out of your life a long time ago. Amelie said enthusiastically, you know what I came to in my 45th year? There's a reason rich people refuse to talk to ordinary people. They just burden them with their problems. And I can't be so selective. It's not honorable. That's not how my parents raised me. Reese didn't even hear Amelie, but continued his digging. So do you want to end this chaos in your life or not? Amelie asked. Well, it's clear that everyone makes their own happiness. But when everyone chooses me as a shoulder to cry on or a solver of their problems, it's so annoying that I don't even have the energy for anything else. Do you have any idea what's going on? The whining continued. Reese, what would you ideally want? Would you like these same people to treat you differently? Or would you like to have other people around you? Emily asked. Mm, come on, you're going to load me up with your philosophical questions. I'm so disappointed in people today that I don't even have the strength to think about them anymore. Amelie said, mm, okay, let's go the other way. Rees, you're 45, I'm 36, we're not young anymore. 
and we've known each other long enough that we've had a relatively smooth relationship. We can stand each other fine, and if you and I still get married, as a logical continuation of all this, you will have a chance to tell everyone that you married a terrible bitch who does not allow you to communicate with the usual circle of communication. Yes, and money will stop asking for money because you will have a good reason. You need to feed your family. How do you like this decision? Amelie asked. Oh, Amelie, I've been married twice and failed each time. I'm disappointed in women. It's easier with you. You know how to negotiate with people to be direct, but marriage? I'm not ready for that, Ree said. What's the reason? Let's find out, Amelie pressed. Well, you know my family. As the heir to my father's business, I have to be in constant contact with them, and I have to pay my share of everyone's money. And if there's a new person in my life, I don't even want to think about it, Reese whimpered. Mm hmm, let me guess. You don't want a new person to come along because they're going to claim their piece of your estate, right? And you only want to bequeath it to your own. I figured that out a long time ago, but I thought you pointed out that not everything in this life is measured in money. Certainly not in my value system. I mean, I'm not a threat to your beloved money. I'm a relatively safe option for you. Didn't you realize that? She asked. Oh, that's it, Amelie. I don't like to talk about these things. It's a painful subject for me. Let's close the question. When are you going to find time to just talk? Reese asked. Never now. Reza, you blame others for being mercantile because you are. I don't care if you just heard that or not. Other than that, you're a wonderful person to me. You're not only nice to be friends with, you're even nice to fight with, which you and I have had more than once and every time we've come out victorious. But that's all in the past. We will never see or talk to you again, Amelie said and hung up the phone. If someone else were around her, they'd be telling her that she was overthinking herself, that she needed to learn to think positively and think good thoughts about people and stuff like that. But it's a good thing she doesn't have people like that around her and Amelia is free to make any mistakes in her life, even the most fatal ones. Two intellectuals were sitting in a coffee shop making small talk, or Blagger Buja had a new release yesterday. One of the Tyler brothers was there, said the first one. Oh, that's cool. I can imagine how interesting it was. I'll be sure to watch it and you can give me the link, said the other one. Yes, take a look. But I'm warning you, you're in for a disappointment. The crystal clear image of a noble family with the highest moral and ethical standards crumbled in one hour. I basically assumed they were not without sin because, well, no man, especially with such financial resources and such influence in society, can be without sin. Everyone has their dark sides. It's just that these people were very skillful at hiding their demons for a very long time. Yesterday, their genie was out of the bottle. People breathed a sigh of relief because Akella missed at last. Now they are closer to reality, said the first one. So what was it all about? The first one, a young man in an expensive suit and glasses asked interestedly, there's a scandal between the oldest Tyler's children. A polygon is formed on one side, son Matthew on the other side, daughter Kira on the third side, the first legal wife, the mother of these two, and of course the young wife, a model and actress Lillian can't divide the family's assets between them. So this conversation leaked out. Today it was grabbed by all news resources. They say that right after graduation, the elder Tyler went into the hospital with a heart attack. That's also a sign that it's not as clean as people have been led to believe all their lives, said the other. And this could be part of their PR. He will be in hospital for a couple of weeks and then he will come out and his ratings will rise again. People will start listening to this family with renewed enthusiasm, forgetting about politicians and showmen. They've got it all worked out, said the first one. They found it unpleasant to listen to all this. She decided to save her ears from the trashing of her family, who are probably no strangers to her now. Mom, hi. What are you doing here? How long have you been sitting here? My Emily asked. An hour or two. I'm sitting here waiting for my naughty daughter to come home. Congratulations, your gene jokes really got to your dad. He's been drinking every night since that day. I got tired of putting up with his suspicions. We had a fight, and he showed me the door at my age, ungrateful, resented my mother, proof. And she looks a lot like them. I'll send you a recording of the conversation with her and her. All right, send all the material you have. 
We'll put it in the paper, said the editor, and another sensation was ready to hit the world. Meanwhile, the head of the Tyler family had no idea what was coming. R.T. Andreevich, all the indicators of your body are normal. Tomorrow you will be discharged, but the rules remain the same. No worries and stress. You need to take care of yourself. Hmm said the doctor last night to the delight of Lizovsky. So today he woke up in a high mood. As normal people do, the first thing Tyler did was to check the news about himself on all the news portals. Family drama takes to a new level. Artie Tyre has a daughter out of wedlock who also claims his inheritance read the first headline. The others copied from this and the news was already being discussed online. Lisovsky felt sick again but he gathered all his strength in a fist and decided to go home today. Before arriving home, he dialed the phone number of his young and ambitious wife in the car. Nellian, how is it that the whole world already knows about yesterday's questionable girl? How did this information get to the press? He asked. Hmm, how should I know? It's probably your Maya Antonovna. I've always told you that she only pretends that she has no claims on you, but in fact she is always taking revenge on you behind your back for not being able to keep you. Who else cares? Lillian replied. Lillian, I'm asking you again, don't slander the mother of my children. She's not likely to stoop to the level of retaliating against me through the press. She has the ability to talk to me directly about anything, Tyler said. I don't get it. Are you accusing me of this? Artie, shame on you. How could you think that about me? I am crushed by your attitude. You're accusing me of nothing, and that's death to me, she cried. So it's not you. Then who is it? Is it my daughter, Kiera? Tyler wondered. It could easily be. Daughters are always jealous of their fathers. All the more reason for her to be in solidarity with her mother, plus she hasn't gotten over her teenage traumas. She's 36 and still acting like a 16-year-old, constantly resenting you for lack of attention. It's a hole inside a person, a lifelong hole that sucks in everything, even your love and care for her, Lillian said. Not missing an opportunity to spite Kira. Oh, I'll talk to her too, okay? I'll be home soon, he replied and ended the conversation. The family arguments didn't yield much results. Tyler realized that the more he tried to get to the truth, the more lies and slander his loved ones were telling him. So he decided to take a different path. By then, Amelie was ready to burn the DNA transcript and write a heartbreaking post about it on social media. Without naming names or characters, of course, but she kept putting it off until later. Right now, she's sitting in front of the mirror, staring hatefully at her mole on her collarbone. She's going over in her head how to remove it and feel like everyone else. Then she gets a phone call, Emily. Hi, it's Artie Tyler. Do you recognize me? The voice asked, Hello, I didn't recognize you, but somehow unexpectedly. She was confused. Hmm, I'm out of the hospital, I'm better. But I remember that there is an open issue between us. Let's meet somewhere you like and discuss it in detail, he suggested. What should we talk about? I think we understand each other. You're ruling out the possibility of other people having your genes. I get that, Amelie said. Why such hasty conclusions? We're adults. And we should realize that such news can knock anyone out of shape, even in a hospital bed and in front of all the family members. Please allow for human error, Tyler said. Emily thought for a moment. His arguments do have merit. Okay, let's try to discuss it then. Amelie agreed. What's your favorite restaurant? The man asked. Emily thought again. A restaurant in her world is the kind of place you go to twice a year on holidays and are endlessly surprised by everything in it. And then at the end of the evening are horrified by the prices, then work up the courage to pay the bill and convince yourself that you deserve it for a long time to come. And this person asks, as if the rest of the world is just as adroit at choosing restaurants as they are at choosing a coffee shop or fast food outlet. Um, I don't know. Amelie replied. That's all right. Then let me invite you to the royal court. It's really quite exquisite there. 18th century concept combined with utilitarian modernity. It's an unexpected sight. I'll send a driver to pick you up at 6 p.m. He'll call you and you'll give him your location. I'll see you at the royal court at 8 0 p.m., Sharp Tyler said and hung up. Mom, my supposed father called and invited me to meet him at a restaurant. Would you like to come? 
Do you remember anything? Amelie asked her mother. Are you also in the same place as your father? If I had a relationship with such a man, and if I had a daughter by him, would I still be where I am? What do you think? Just try to imagine the situation. Wouldn't I myself claim his patronage and attention? And I advise you not to go there. He's not likely to say anything nice. You'll embarrass yourself and throw that paper away and forget this silly idea, said her mother. Tyler's driver arrived at the appointed time. A large man got out of the front seat of the car and opened the door for her. Amelie said hello, but he didn't even look in her direction. They drove in silence on the road, the girl who showed up claiming to be Artie's daughter, because he thinks it's me. But it's obvious that jealousy is the biggest problem for you and your mother. I don't need to hurt anyone. Artie loves me enough, and he'd never trade me for anyone. It's you who should curb your emotions, said Lillian. Kira took a deep exhale to contain her indignation. I'm gonna get some. Everybody's got their own truth. And there are plenty of people like you, dreaming of jumping on a ship to paradise. You'll have to make your way among them, the woman lamented. Oh, oh everything, Elvira or Dievna, please keep your wise thoughts to yourself. Hmm. Amelie interrupted him, and that was the end of the conversation. Once again, when Amelie came home from work tired, her mother was not at all herself. Ooh, come on, we have to go. A neighbor called to say that my father was sick and he could barely knock on the neighbor's door. I would have left on my own, but I couldn't figure out your transportation. My mother complained. Mm, that's it. Let's go. I guess my father never learned to take care of himself without your instructions, Amelie said on the way. Oh, of course he can't do it alone. Men are like children, only bigger. They need a mentor, a helper for everything. They need to be reminded of everything to lay the groundwork everywhere. That's what relationships are all about, said the mother. Oh, so it's a child, not a husband. I wouldn't want a husband like that, said Amelie. That's why you're going to spend the rest of your life alone. She wants some knight or prince or whatever you call them. Mother was outraged. Mom, believe me. I just want you to learn to live more peacefully, Amelie said. First, her mother said nothing. But Amelie realized from the look in her eyes that she had no moral right to express her views on the subject of relationships, much less teach them. And it didn't matter that you were well-meaning. By the time they arrived, neighbors had already managed to call a medical emergency for Sami, and he was taken to the hospital. Amelis and her mother hurried there. As soon as they arrived, they knocked on the doctor's office. It's a tough case. The man must have been under some kind of acute stress, plus too much alcohol. With his medical history, that's an unforgivable approach to health. But we're going to try to get him out. You can't visit him yet. He's getting the treatments he needs. He needs rest, the doctor said. As they left the doctor's office, they took a seat in the foyer and waited for something unclear. Mom had time to call her older daughters in the meantime, and they were already rushing to the hospital to see Dad. And Amelie received another unexpected call. It was Reese, whom she had already easily cut out of her life. Hello, Amelie. It's been so long since we talked to you, he said into the phone. Mm hmm. How has it been so long? It's only been two weeks. Why does that surprise you so much? You used to think of me every six months, Amelie said. Just don't hurt me, please. I'm in enough pain as it is. I'd like to see you right now. Where are you? He asked. Place Amelie figured there was nothing for her to do until she had some clarity with her father anyway. Why not talk to her own whining father one more time? She gave the address of the hospital and an hour later Reese was waiting for her in the courtyard. You look so much prettier, he said first thing. Reese, I congratulate myself. That's the first compliment from you. Amelie grinned. I just drove by that house where you used to live when you and I first met. Reese said, unclear as to why. Yes, I too. When I pass by that house, I remember those days. Me madly in love with you, flying on the wings of happiness with my naive dreams and hopes. It's all gone, she said. Reese's face changed. He, how did it go? What's your point? Is something wrong? I'm right here with you. Everything can be as we dreamed if we want it to be, Reese said, taking her hand for the first time in a long time. Reese, did something happen to you? Did you have another fight with someone close to you? Emily asked apprehensively. Stop being mean. I just missed you. You're all over the headlines on the internet. Whenever I see you, I'm reminded of our past. Let's start over, Reese. Mm. 
What's changed? Amelie wondered. Oh, I've thought it over. We're old enough to know each other, Reese said, stroking her arm. I think I was involved in a conversation like this recently. Only from the other side. Have it your way. Let's start over. Let's start over. I'll take care of some family matters. My father will come to his senses. My mother will reconcile. And then I'll return to my life and we'll turn over a new leaf together. Amelia assured me, having said the main thing, Amelia felt the urge to go back to her parents. Reese's suggestion that she go out and have a quick dinner with her mother was unsupported. When Amelia returned to the hospital lobby, the nurses were already here. All because of your bad jokes. Sister Abby said reproachfully, Yeah, I'd rather be in my own life and stay out of other people's relationships and my parents. Ari echoed her. Mom's in despair. Dad's in the hospital, one foot in the hospital. What did you want? If they said that yes, they bought you from gypsies for a couple kilos of potatoes and they stole you from an oligarch's family, would that make you feel better? Abby was gaining momentum. Or, I only wanted to know the truth. Amelie excused herself. No, dear. You've given yourself the illusion that you can jump into a fairy tale and run away from your life at a moment's notice. It's all a product of your unsettled life. If you had simple human concerns like family, children, and a husband, you wouldn't be doing this nonsense, Ari said. Mm. So what's the bottom line? What did the Lazowskis tell you? Did they even accept you into their family? Abby asked Riley. Holes offered money and said they often wanted to hang their children on it. Amelie told it like it is. Ah, uh, well, then of course it all made sense, Ari said. But I didn't take the money, told Lisowski everything I thought about him and left. Amelie said, Ari and Abby were grabbing their heads. Mom, we told you that you spoiled. She grew up not only selfish at your place, but a stuffed up fool, Abby said through a gloating laugh, word after word. And while the father came to his senses, the sisters had time to quarrel among themselves. They were unanimous in their opinion that Amelie had ruined everything. Her mother remained indifferent, but her displeasure at Amelie's actions was evident on her face. When daddy comes to, I'll apologize to him. Mom, you forgive him too. It was all my fault. Make up and get on with your lives, she said when she was tired of defending her simple desire to know the truth of the past. That's easy for you to say. They've been living together for so many years, and now there's doubt about mom's fidelity. It's a huge blow to a man's ego. But you don't know the ins and outs when you've never even been in a relationship, she said. Girls, stop fighting amongst yourselves. Try not to mention the subject to your father now. I'll try to make him feel comfortable, said the mother. Toward midnight, the doctor said that Alexander Nikolaevich was better and that it was possible to visit him for a while. His mother was the first to go to it. After a few minutes, she came out with shining eyes and said, oh, he and I made up and decided not to fight anymore and not to leave each other. She said, the daughters rejoiced. Abby followed and came out happy and satisfied as well. Then Ari went, stayed a little longer than the others. And when she came out, she too was wiping away tears of happiness and hugging her big sister and her mom. Emily headed toward the door of the room, but Ari stopped her. Hey, mademoiselle, you've had enough surprises. Please don't bother daddy. If you go in there, he'll remember everything again and he'll feel bad, Ari said, tugging on her sleeve. Emily is confused, but her sisters and mother are not. A.K. Ari's right. Amelie, you shouldn't make eye contact with your father yet, her mother said. Then they sweetly discussed plans for tomorrow and the upcoming family get together when my father was released from the hospital. Emily stayed on the side. The sisters decided to go with their mother to their parents' house. Amelie went to her own. She wasn't asked to go together. Kira Tyler is gathering her many friends at her country mansion today as usual. She has two young children who are cared for by nannies. There is a husband who is engaged in business, thanks to the patronage of his wife's influential father. Kira has one task in life, to be friends with all the celebrities and have fun. This has been the case all her life and this is how she intends to live on. When the guests were drunk, one of her friends approached her and called her to the side. At first, there was a verbal argument between the friends, and then it escalated to a loud argument. The guests began to listen curiously and whispered among themselves, smiling intermittently at each other. Hmm, Kira, how long can this go on? You've been playing us for almost a year now. 
If you can't resolve the issue, you should just say so. We won't have any complaints against you, and to take every time decent sums of money for unsubstantiated promises is not a person of your level. Me, a middle-aged man, whom everyone knows as a representative of one of the well-known companies, was indignant. I don't get it, Brandon. Are you having doubts about my influence? Have you forgotten that since college, I've been the one to get you out of trouble? There are witnesses, they're everywhere. How dare you embarrass me in front of my guests? More, Pira was indignant in response. You guys are scandalizing in public. It's not good for either of you, and it'll be all over the boards tomorrow. Stop arguing or go to a private space. The others tried to calm them down, but Kira was already on edge. You, Brandon, were nothing when you and I met at the college desk. Thanks to me and our friendship, you were able to make a career out of being a low life, Kira said. I'm not touching on our past and our friendship together, but I don't like the way you're setting up respectable people. They all know you from your father. You could hurt his credibility. All I need from you is just honesty. If for some reason you have a hard time dealing with their issue, just say so, Brandon said. A man of respectable years, who had previously stood aside and watched what was happening, came closer and Mark granted, you really shouldn't be stressing over this woman's words and actions anymore. It's clear from her words that she's deliberately leading us around. She's not going to deal with us fairly. We categorically do not work with such people. I suggest we end this unpleasant conversation. And you, Mrs. Tyler, give us our money back, and we'll leave peacefully, the man said to Kira. Did I take money from you? Are you confused? Do you have any idea who you're making these claims to? Would the Tyler's daughter take money from anyone? Kira grinned. Oh, Brandon, who had previously kept his cool, burst out in emotion. Mm. How dare you lie so brazenly? You've been making money for your entertainment and desires all your life by promising to solve other people's problems. People, don't be silent. Tell me who among you has never paid her to get the favor of a powerful person or to meet them. Why are you all silent? Tell it like it is. This lady has already crossed all kinds of boundaries. Her father should know everything, he said, and Kira was truly afraid of her father's anger. As a man who valued his reputation, he knew how to inflict ruthless punishments on his children. Suspension from business, refusal to give out regular money, or even to make them stay away for and stepped on Kira's sore thumb. The crowd was still whispering, and some of them looked at each other to indicate that they agreed with Brandon's words. Kira didn't notice that either. All of you who drink and eat and party at my expense, you're all hypocrites. All of you have always wanted something from me. I know your true faces. There's no gratitude from you, just betrayal. Right now, every one of you would like to stab me in the back. Go ahead, do it. Don't be shy. Haven't I seen what you're capable of? Mm, Kira shouted as her husband led her away. The next morning, the tabloids were filled with a new sensation. Tyler's daughter is found to have defrauded big investors. She promised everyone the patronage of powerful people, but in the end, she didn't fulfill her promises. Could it be that the Tyler family is losing its influence because of their daughter's dishonest behavior? They wrote, Artie Tyler himself was one of the first to know. Her father was extremely angry with her when he dialed her number in the morning. She hadn't woken up yet and didn't realize what was going on. Who are you such a bad girl, daughter? You're not the kind of student who needs to be rescued from the clutches of criminal friends. You promised me that you would think before you promised anything to anyone. My father said angrily, oh, you mean these guys? Dad, it's not too much of an honor to them, is it? Well, if you feel sorry for them, then deal with their issues and the problem will be over, Kira said in her sleep. Ew, Kira, you're not hearing me. This is about your shenanigans. It has nothing to do with me. How long will you continue to create chaos and let your father or brother solve problems for you? In our family, such behavior is totally unacceptable. You must learn that rule. No one in our family behaves like this except you. If I were you, I'd be glad I was born into such a family, praying to parents like your mother and me. And you still haven't gotten smart, shouted my father into the phone. Oh, I see what you mean, father. You supposedly have another daughter on the horizon, all well-meaning, and you have me so unlucky. Good luck to you and mom. May your peasant girl live up to all your hopes, she said and hung up the phone. Kira started to get ready to meet her friend. No, I'm not going to let this go. 
She's got my parents all over me now. You see, what kind of person you are. Even parents betray their children. Kira was indignant to her friend. People like her get into the soul of anyone, and at the same time, prouder of poor sheep. I hate her. I want to punish her, Kira shouted. Her. So you have every opportunity to do it. Take it and do it, said her friend. And really, what am I fussing about? Give me the number of that. Journalist with glasses. What's his name? Kira said and got down to business, tired of the family squabbles. Amelia has decided to put her mind to work. And her job is a demanding one, selling cottages in vacation areas. Today, she has a big deal planned. If everything goes well, her boss Eugene Viktorovich promised that he will allocate a good commission so that she could buy a car not on credit, but for cash. So Amelia is very motivated today. The clients promised to arrive at the office early in the morning. Amelia arrived before them. Hours go by, but no word from the clients. Amelia starts to worry. She dialed the phone number and decided to inquire. Moran, this is Amelia from the construction company. You and I agreed yesterday to sign a contract to buy one of our cottages. We are waiting for you in our office. She the client's answer dumbfounded her. Amelia, I'm sorry, but our boss rejected the deal this morning. The reason I think you know why. Our boss is very sensitive about his partners. Thank you for your attention, but we can't work with you anymore, said the client. Oh, I don't understand. What's the matter? Amelia asked, genuinely perplexed. Well, I'm sorry again if I'm ruining your day. There's a news story about you and your picture. I'm sorry again, the customer said and hung up. Emily, with trembling hands, got in to read the news and was horrified. New sensations say that the alleged illegitimate daughter of Artie Tyler turned out to be a common fraudster used to make money by blackmail. And on top of that, Amelie's photos are going viral. People have not been stingy in comments. Everywhere in the direction of Amelie flying curses, demands to be punished to the full extent of the law, put in prison for the rest of his life. After seeing the headline, Amelie's colleague, lawyer Oleg, advised to sue the publication. But Yevgeny Viktorovich dissuaded him. It is clear that this is what the customer wants. The more Amelie will fight with them, the more damage they can do. Several days passed in terrible agony. Amelie lost sleep, fell into apathy, practically stopped eating. The days passed by without a trace. She never met Rees after she promised to start over. Along with her life, Amelie's job has fallen apart. Now none of her clients want to do business with her. The old ones just don't pick up the phone. The new ones run away after a couple of days. So a whole month passed unnoticed without a single transaction. On the last day, Amelie decided not to strain Evgeny Viktorovich. She wrote a statement, attached a thank you letter for his support, and simply left. Evgeny Viktorovich understood her condition perfectly well, so he did not bother her yet, giving her time for emotions. She would have suffered indefinitely if it hadn't been for the doorbell ringing at an unexpected hour. Emily wanted to ignore it at first, but when her mother rang the phone and started banging on the door incessantly, she had to open it. Her parents were not interested in her affairs. Judging by their mood, relations between them had not improved much. Dad was sullen, mom was unhappy, her daughter's sluggish attempts to cheer them up were not supported. Oh, Amelie, since you started this, let's finish it. Show me where they give out your DNA transcripts. My father and I want to go there too. What if your father's blood belongs to the Votzan or William family? Said her mother. Mm, that's great. It's the best way to find out the whole truth. I'm glad you're right for it. Dad apparently wasn't thrilled with the idea, but mom insisted they needed to find out the whole truth and set the record straight. So people in sterile clothes came for the second time to get biological samples and promised that tomorrow they could find out the whole background of their ancestors in the Pure Truth Clinic. The family waited for the next day in silence. Late at night, Amelie decided to leave her parents alone and take a walk down the street. She often spent her time that way lately so she could get tired and fall into a deep sleep. When an unfamiliar number rang on her phone, she stubbornly ignored it, mistaking the caller for Reese. But suddenly, for some reason, she decided to answer it. My, good evening. I apologize for calling at this late hour. You probably don't remember me. My name is Sammy, and we met in my office a couple of years ago, and then we lost touch, 
said a pleasant male voice. Hmm, Sammy, no, I didn't forget. I just didn't know how to get in touch with you. Really lost sight of you, Amelia rejoiced. If I appear to be inaccurate, I apologize in advance. But you've been in the media lately. I was wondering if there's anything I can do to help. I know you're going through a difficult time in your life, Sammy said. Yes, you can really help me. I have a favor to ask of you. Do you agree? Amy Lee asked. Oh, I agree before you made your request public. You can rely on me in any situation, Sammy said. Well, in this case, I ask you not to believe everything that is written there, and that may be written in the future. It was an imprudent step on my part, and the same my incorrigible character, my keen sense of justice. I suffer a great deal from it myself, said Amy Lee. Oh, I spent almost a year abroad. I miss my own, even simple walks around the city. Would you have time to have dinner with me tomorrow and then walk around the city at night? Sami asked. Amelie didn't refuse, as she remembered Sami as one of the nicest people in her life from the very beginning. The three came to the Pure Truth Clinic in an anxious mood. It didn't take long for the girl at the reception desk to find the results. This is your result, Mrs. Vasutkina. And this is yours, Alexander Vasutkin. We congratulate you. Your genes are 100 Vazutkins, said the girl. So there are no admixtures of Watson, William Harden. Mother clarified. The girl smiled and replied, no errors, no mistakes. None of the above names are in your blood, she said. Ellie waited for her parents to start making claims against each other again. However, neither of them was the first to initiate a scandal. They got into a cab and went straight to their home. Emily decided to take a walk in the park. She has plenty of time before the evening, and in the evening a pleasant meeting with Alexia awaits her. As she strolled through the park, she saw a woman of advanced age. Amelie's attention was drawn to her austere attire. She was dressed in black, holding a black fan and a black net veil. The lady was walking slowly and as if looking out for someone on the roadway. She stood for a few moments, then waved to the passing cars, looked after them for a long time, and returned to the bench. Amelie pretended to look at her phone while she watched the lady. Do I seem to be causing you questions of curiosity? Don't hesitate to ask, the lady said, turning to Amelie. Oh, I'm sorry if it seemed that way. I was just looking at your elegant outfit. With admiration, of course, Amelie said. The lady sighed heavily and said, Oh, who knew grief could look so elegant? These are my morning clothes. I wore it 25 years ago. That day, my beloved husband and my 12-year-old daughter rushed to the airport to pick me up from vacation. But they didn't make it. They got into an accident on the way. At home, instead of a family dinner, my relatives were waiting for me to attend a funeral, the lady said. Oh, I sympathize with you, Amelie said. Thank you. From that day on, I decided that I would keep my loved ones in my memory. They support me in that. My daughter and my husband and I used to walk in this park. And now when I walk here alone, I see them passing me in our car and waving at me. I realize it's all a figment of my imagination, but it's at least a way to live, the lady said. Oh, and I'm someone's daughter too, but I don't know whose daughter. Only one thing is clear, an unwanted daughter, said Amelie. The lady was interested in Amelie's story. When she told it, she listened with great interest and did not ridicule her or judge her like all the other people around her and around Tyler. And for some reason, when I saw you, I noticed a resemblance to Anna Albertovna Lisovskaya, who is Artie Tyler's mother. She taught all her life at the Theater Institute. I studied there, then even worked there for a while. She was a prominent woman. She's almost 90 now and still in good health and sanity. You should see her, if only as a mere curiosity. A lot of things might become clear to you then. I think so, said the lady. Oh, I think there's no point, because the Lisovskys made it clear to me that there's no room for strangers in their family. And I am a stranger to them. Besides, they've been harassing me. I still haven't cleaned up the mess because of my curiosity. I just wanted to know the truth. They thought I was claiming their property, Amelie said, Kiera Tyler. Meanwhile, arrived at her mother's country home. Her mother, how could you let this upstart peasant girl cast a shadow in our family? Hmm. She, what are you talking about? How could she influence us? She's a nobody, mother asked. That's what you think, and that's not what my father thinks. I think she does have something to do with our family, 
and my father doesn't deny it, Kira said. Do you have proof? What makes you think that? How can the Tylers have two princesses when the throne is already occupied? Mother asked. My father made it clear to me that I was stupid, that I didn't appreciate his services, that if he had another daughter, I would appreciate and pray for him. It's clear who we're talking about, Kira said. Hmm, Kira, I know the words your father used to tell you off. I fully support him in this because year after year, you have caused our family bigger problems. When you were in high school, you hit other girls and boys. We chalked it up to childhood. When you were a student, you were always in trouble with the law and with shady companies. Wherever your father helped you out, wherever you got out of the police force. When you started building your career, you colluded with your father's competitors, the mother said. Mom, you know they all tricked me into falling for them. Enough already. How many times can you reproach me with the mistakes of my youth? And when you got married, your father became a heartbreaker because of your self-serving suitors, each of whom managed to claim half of the fortune your father gave you. All because you fall into unworthy companies, and they find you because you're not much different from them, her mother said. Oh, I see what you mean. It's always the youngest daughter's fault in an unfriendly family, said if you realize that that it's time you started acting like a mature, responsible person for your own good. Your father and I will be gone, and that upstart Haliavskaya will have you and Matthew in no time. Come between you and take every last bit of your life away from you. That's what you need to grow up for. If we're being honest, why are you collecting money from everyone, promising the loyalty of authority figures? You've been doing it for a long time, and your father's turned a blind eye to it for so long said your mother. Oh, but it's normal practice among important people, Kira tried to object. The circle of important people is also very different. If you mean an adequate circle, then such behavior is unacceptable there. If you're talking about your dubious friends, then of course you can make up all sorts of things. But the father's right about one thing. If you were a smarter daughter, you'd be able to make mountains with his influence and opportunities. My mother said, mm, so you think so too. Are you on his side too? Maybe I don't know something. Maybe this peasant girl is really your daughter and I'm just a foundling for you. Or maybe you took me from an orphanage. Hmm, Kira cried. Stop acting like a little kid. You've been a mother of two for a long time. Get a grip on yourself and pay back the money you borrowed from. And apologize to your father if you don't want to lose his favor. He's got a tough temper, you know that. If he decides to punish you, no amount of persuasion will work on him, said the mother. Oh no, anything but for such a rejection of his own daughter and betrayal. I will not apologize to him, Kira said. Then you'll make it worse for yourself. I don't know what you're so uncomprehending about. I, too, resent your behavior in life, her mother said. Kira left without saying goodbye. But she had no intention of apologizing to her father or accepting her parents' terms. Emily enjoyed the peace and quiet of going through the junk in her apartment. She didn't like this business. Normally, she would call a cleaning service, but when you're unemployed for two months and you're in an apathetic mood, it's time to save money and use the therapeutic properties of general cleaning. She was so engrossed in the process that she didn't immediately hear the phone ringing. And when she picked up the phone, she immediately recognized a familiar, pleasant voice. Emily, hi. This is Rose. I ran into you in the park the other day. The woman said, Oh, I remember you. Good afternoon. It's good to hear from you, Amelie said sincerely. I have some important information for you, Amelie. Tyler's having a gathering of his old friends at a restaurant this Saturday. I'll text you the address and you can come with me or separately. But either way, you'll have a chance to see the woman you bear a striking resemblance to. Rose said, I don't know if I should do it or not. Amelie hesitated. But you and I remember that your goal is to establish the truth, not wealth, influence, or any of the other perishable things, Rose said. Yes, you're right about that. I think I'll come with you, said Amelie. There was still plenty of time before Saturday. Amelie lived her usual life. She had new interviews every day, which she passed brilliantly, but at the end she was still rejected. Kira Tyler and his young wife, Lillian, have had plenty of time to use her in their feuds. The internet is full of articles and posts about Amelie being a fraud. When she told the story to Toby, he was the only person who wasn't horrified by the whole thing. He just laughed. Yeah, 
It's really hard for someone who doesn't understand the rules of the game of our times to understand your question. But what's the bottom line? How did you end up in a family of strangers with such genes? He asked. That's what I wanted to find out. I didn't plan to leave my parents or run away to another family. I thought my loved ones might want to know the truth, too. Maybe there were other stories in there. Emily said, exactly. Usually these things happen either through the silence of a few or through human negligence. But it's too big an offense to leave unchecked, he said. I don't know. In any case, I've ruined my life for good. But it wasn't settled, so I don't have to worry about it, Emily said. You're funny and a little bit resentful of fate and people. But that's easily remedied. You believe what I say. Sammy said, you're the only one I trust. I've never met anyone like you before, she said, and Alexia noticeably dropped the call from Reese, who still believed that they had a fresh start and that Amelie would find time for their rare and uninteresting meetings. Meanwhile, Artie Tyler was having a conversation with his assistant. Mm. What do you think about this girl who's supposedly related to our family? Somehow, she doesn't seem to me to be the kind of slime ball we're used to seeing. For some reason, I'm having trouble talking to her, Tyler said. Oh, I have seen her picture and video online. I follow her social networks. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's true, but she reminds me of you with her character and style of thinking. Principled in her own way, proud, doesn't put anyone in authority, thinks independently. An interesting person in general, said the assistant. Oh, but how could she have anything to do with us? I may have had affairs when I was younger, but I know my children by sight, Tyler said, or maybe your wife has some secrets. Forgive me if I was rude, said the assistant. Oh, if she had a secret, I'd know. Though how could I know if I ended up overseas at the birth of all three of my children? Tyler reflected. The meeting of old friends at the restaurant, at the invitation of Adame, was organized to the highest standard. The audience was like a selection. The woman herself was really as Rose had described her. A stately woman, wearing a fair amount of makeup, dressed elegantly, talking slowly, emphasizing every word. This is what women who are satisfied with their age and position in society look. She greeted Rose very warmly. They stood embracing for a long time, Adame paying her younger friend her respects and admiring her resilience. She also mentioned in passing that it was possible to take off the morning and turn toward life. When Anna Albertona saw the unfamiliar young woman next to Rose, she first gave her a quick glance, then looked at her again and held her gaze. Amelie was embarrassed. Hello, I've heard a lot about you. Please accept my respects, she said automatically, to which she nodded her head and went to greet the rest of the guests. Oh, I shouldn't have come here. She didn't like me. Amelie said after they sat down at the table, you'll never know your true attitude from the faces of such people. It's too early to draw conclusions, Rose said. Meanwhile, the guests settled down and began to get acquainted. And this nice lady seems to be from the Tyler family. Same nose, same eyes, even the turn of her head looks familiar, said another older woman suddenly. Emily was even more embarrassed. Oh, I'm just, for company with my aunt, Amelie gave out, leaning against Rose. This is my new friend. I met her recently by chance. She made an impression on me. I promised to show her the Honorable Anna Albertovna, Rose said. And you take it easy and act natural, she whispered to Emily. A little more time passed. New people came. Oh, oh, what a lovely girl. I suppose she's Artie's daughter, the one we nursed back in the day with the whole ward. Another old woman said suddenly, Marty's daughter looked a little different from her father. And this guest is ours. Anna Albertovna answered briefly and looked at Amelie carefully again. When everyone was seated, Anna Albertovna approached each of her guests and expressed her gratitude for their attention. Then she chose an empty seat and sat down directly opposite Amelie. A couple minutes later, when Amelie noticed a detail about the older woman, she almost choked on a piece of cheese. A day I had the same mole on her collarbone that Amelie had been struggling with all this time, and in the end had never made it to the as if it was a sign of fate that the mole would stay with her forever. Oh, and she has a mole just like mine. On her collarbone, look, Amelie Rose whispered. She saw it and nodded her head. Amelie was now determined. Now it was as if she could feel the warmth coming from Adami. Amelie decided to wait until the end of the evening so as not to spoil the party. 
Meanwhile, Lillian once again complained about Kira's antics to her husband. Yardi, I understand that she's your only daughter, but she goes out of her way sometimes to get the press all over me or to spread rumors about me on purpose. You need to talk to her about it, she said. Exactly, she's the only daughter. If there had been another daughter, maybe this one wouldn't have grown up so selfish, he said thoughtfully. Lillian rejoiced. Oh, that's a great idea. Let's have a daughter. You'll have two daughters just like that, she said. Yardy didn't answer her, but went back to his own thoughts. When all the guests had gone, Amelie herself approached Anna Albertovna and told her story. To her great surprise, she took it very calmly. I heard about you, and the harassment too. Well, that's the rules of public life. I'd like to warn you against disappointment. Even if I confess, even if you have hard facts with proof, it's unlikely you'll make it into this family. You can keep in touch with me. My granddaughter has gone rogue. She doesn't even visit me, she said. I'm not claiming to be part of your family. I just wanted to get to the bottom of it. Maybe I'm not the only one in the world. Maybe a lot of other people didn't grow up in the same family, like you and Anne Rose, Amelie said. Oh, it could be. But I remember the month of May 2015 very well. My Artie was away. His wife has no mother of her own. She and I were like mother and daughter. She called me and told me that she had gone to give birth. I immediately drove to the birthing center where the doctors were already waiting for her. The labor was hard. She was four days and four nights with one foot in the other world. They told me it was a girl. Later, they let me hold her in my arms to look at her. It was a shriveled up bundle. I don't remember anything else. I had two nights to take care of my granddaughter. Then I called in a couple of trainees who were on duty that night paid them and instructed them to take good care of my granddaughter. That was it. Then the woman in labor came to her senses and began to feed the girl gradually. That's all I know, said Adame. Make. And this must be maternity. Hospital number 205. Amelia asked, yes. That's where she gave birth to her daughter. Anna Alberuna said that was enough information for Amelia. Her eyes lit up at the brilliant idea that had been on the surface for so long but had never reached her emotionally clogged brain. She quickly said goodbye to the old woman and hurried on her way. Basement room with no windows or doors. A metal door with the sign archive hanging on it. A woman in a white coat led the two of them into this uninteresting room the size of a library and left them alone. You have to search by date. It's all there. You'll figure it out. When you're done, leave without being seen. Not everyone has access to this place, the woman said and left the room within minutes. Amelia and Sami found a 36-year-old videotape. They had to re-watch the 24-hour video all day long until Amelie recognized her mother in the tape and Tyler's wife in the next room. Everything was going their way until the night of the video came. As soon as the clock struck 1-0, the young trainees had a feast, but the feast didn't last long. The whole place began to shake. It was clear that there had been an earthquake. The young doctors abandoned their desk, ran to the room with the babies, and each grabbed two or three babies in their hands to be ready to evacuate the building if necessary. But the danger passed in a few minutes. The medics returned to the room and placed the babies in a different order than they had originally been. Amelie almost fainted at what she saw. Twenty-four babies were out of place. Making a copy from the tape, he and Sami thanked the nurse again for her help and sat in the car to drink coffee. Do you have any idea how many are like me? There are 24 more, Amelie said and laughed. Yeah, and no one has a clue about anything. I'd like to get the transcripts before I leave, too. Oh, you know, I wouldn't recommend it, said Amelia. They both laughed. Bertie Tyler instructed the assistant to look at the tape that was sent to his office. The assistant looked at everything and showed it to the boss. He looked at the assistant silently. Oh, so my daughter is not really my daughter, but that strange girl is still my daughter, right? It goes like this. The following footage shows women being handed babies that are not theirs and none of them realizing it. The assistant said, mm, what can I say? We should call Amelia and finally get to know each other properly. Like real parents with kids, Tyler said and started dialing her number but I heard back that the caller was out of range. At the same minute, the same number was dialed by Sami and his wife, who had just watched the video and were still reeling from the shock. Oh, I don't understand. The operator says she's out of range. 
Where could she have gone? He wondered. Sisters Abby and Anna also watched the tape. For Kira, what she saw was a real shock. Her mother had already arrived at her husband's office and demanded that he find Amelie immediately. The search was fruitless. Toward evening, Tyler's assistant knocked on the door of the apartment Amelie had rented for the past two years. A middle-aged woman opened the door, surrounded by two young men who were signing a document. When asked by the assistant, the woman replied that Amelie had vacated the apartment due to a move to another country. Meanwhile, Amelia Sami successfully landed in a new country where a new happy life together and no indifferent people around. She proved the truth 